Hello, everyone, and welcome to Red Hat Research Day. Um, we're going to start promptly today because we have an awful lot of material. Um, I'm really happy to uh, welcome Dr. Christian Rutenberg to our event. He is an associate professor from the University of Campinas and head of the Intrigue Lab. Um, and uh, the topic today will be dynamic networking, um, many different projects that are going on in parallel there, um, and how to do fluid network control when you're working on data plane research. Um, Simone Fairlin is going to be our conversation leader. Um, so thank you, Simone, for joining us. Uh, and we would like to encourage people, if you have questions during the talk, feel free to uh, join in. You can send questions through chat or you can send through uh, actually joining and talking if you want to discuss a topic um, in more detail and we do welcome people to do that. So Simone will um, guide us through that. And uh, with that, let's get started. Thanks, Heidi. So Christian, I think. Okay. Thank you for, for the opportunity. Thank you for uh, having me here today and share some of our ongoing works and vision around multiple topics, hot topics in, in networking. Let me share my sl slides over here. They are really fresh, just uh, being updated with some of the latest uh, results. Okay, I guess you are receiving my slides, right? Um, yes, but I see um, there is a window, um, main session, <laughs> a window from your system that is in front of the slides. Mm. Should, okay, should, should I try it? Look, looks good. Okay, then let me uh, get started. I can try to, another one if, if you wish, but I, I think that that should be should be fine. Let me try just this one. Mm, it just there is a window open trying to um, download the file. You can just cancel that, and then we see the slides. I think the the, the window is. I will. No, I will do another no. one. Now, I hope that's now it's right. Okay, so um, the agenda for today, I will start by saying some words about our research group, the Intrigue Lab at the University of Campinas. And I will introduce the concept around fluid network control and data plane, which is basically a way, uh, a way to frame uh, what uh, trends that are going on in, in networking around hardware, software, the location of functions, the implementation choices that we have right now. And then uh, it was a, a big challenge, right, Simon, to select five projects that are going on uh, that would interest most the, the Red Hat uh, research folks and, and the audience. Uh, and these are the, the five ones that I, I will go into more details. Uh, there are different stages of maturity. Some are really going on. Uh, uh, and, and starting others, they, they already delivered most of the contributions, so I will talk uh, about them. And, and finally, I would like to, to, to use the opportunity to talk about our just initiated uh, research center called SmartNet. It's a 10 year initiative. Uh, I will briefly introduce the, the vision, and then I would like to use some time with, with you to discuss uh, research collaboration opportunities um, that, uh, that I, I see with uh, the common interests and, uh, in, in Red Hat, okay? Um, we, there will be questions, right, Simon? So folks can put questions in the queue, and we'll stop uh, at selected points, right, to, to, to get the... Then, uh, yeah, but let's try to make this a little bit more like interactive. So yes. you can also, if you see something in the projects, in the topics that is related to the work that you are doing at Red Hat or um, also upstreaming, um, just feel free to just 
ask the questions and then we, we can stop and have a small discussion and continue. Yeah, especially when we go through the different uh, projects, we, we can stop and because of the topics that will jump from, from some technologies to, to others. Okay, so very quickly, uh, uh, Intrigue is the research lab that uh, I'm leading and we are about to make our 10 year anniversary in, in September. Uh, we are located in Campinas in Sao Paulo State in Brazil, in the School of uh, Electrical and Computer Engineering. This is more or less the size of, of the team, uh, around 14, 15 um, graduate students, uh, uh, PhD candidates and master's candidates, plus undergrads, some good amount of alumni already that they went through our group. We are really system oriented. So we like to build systems to prove our research ideas. Uh, and therefore uh, we rely a lot of, on open source uh, as, our, as our research artifacts. And, and therefore we also contribute. Uh, we have a, a number of uh, contributions to open source projects. We are also very industry friendly. We have uh, multiple collaborations. Uh, ongoing and, and past, uh, mostly with the telecommunications sector, with Ericsson, Patek, CTKB, Samsung. We have a, a good amount of uh, successful collaborations. And we are multi-layer in the sense of the, the, at the stack where we, where we look at. Uh, since the beginning, today it's, it's very common to see uh, open source uh, projects or open source practices in research, but uh, I'm, Proud to say that we started uh, using this type of uh, open and research uh, since the beginning. So putting code out there, risk uh, uh, even if it's immature, or, and also using consuming open source in, in our own uh, lab uh, activities. Okay, so this is one comment I, I wanted also to to share about. This is an almost ancient <laughs> slide, 2015, but uh, I, 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 want, uh, I wanted to, to bring it to the table because uh, there's a good opportunity. There was uh, a good opportunity in, in the moment when open source started to play a role in, in, in standards developing organizations by proving concepts, also by bringing demands and uh, academia uh, doesn't have usually the, the chances to contribute to standardization in, in the networking area. And there are some exceptions at uh, IETF, but at open source, uh, there, are, there were and there are still good opportunities. Uh, and that was a moment when our group also started that uh, we were able to, to get into this um, wave of uh, open source and standards and industry and academia. Uh, collaborations. Okay, this is uh, uh, another slide that I like when I, I talk about network socialization. Uh, since we went through the beginnings of this software defined networking, NFB, and more recently in 10 based networking. So these are the four characteristics that I like to highlight. It's about APIs, it's about automation. Of course, it's about open source. Uh, not only software, but also hardware, open hardware designs that, uh, that are accessible and that become research artifacts, research targets, uh, who leads also the roadmaps, more about the users, and uh, from moving from the classical uh, integrated hardware appliances to the software, virtualized software uh, functions. Okay. This is another um, slide that I like to put into context, this, this is an animated one that I use uh, when teaching to, to show how the um, socialization uh, domain has evolved over uh, opening interfaces, programmable interfaces to the devices, to the concepts of uh, controllers, the, the applications, and, and also all the virtualization domain. And more recently, opening even the, the data plane, the, the, the pipelines, the silicon based pipelines through uh, domain specific languages like uh, P4. Um, but what I wanted to, to, to show here is that we have uh, um, 
work in multiple of, of these uh, areas. We built, for instance, the first ONF driver. Uh, there was a competition that at the time where we built a, a very high performance and, and portable um, driver for controllers and, and software agents. We have also uh, a nice uh, VNF benchmarking framework to automate the, the performance benchmarking of VNFs. And uh, at all these errors, we, we have been doing uh, some research on, based on, on open source. Here's just a, a, a list of some selected components. And um, I've mentioned already a couple of them. Uh, and I will come back later to, to some other, some uh, historical references to to some of them and and also more up to date uh, emulation frameworks uh, not only for wireless but also for for wired uh, environments okay so let's talk about the the fluid network control and and, and data planes this is just a term okay this is a term uh, that i coined to to reflect an observation on on ongoing trends in technology and research. Okay. Uh, so I, 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 I put this uh, gas uh, fluid-like figures to show that there's a lot happening uh, in the software to, to, to hardware dimension on the y-axis. As well on the x-axis, there, there is a lot of uh, mobility or choices to where to place and run functions in, in the networking domain. Uh, not just the functions themselves, but also the, the applications. Okay, this is another figure to to show uh, to illustrate this fluidity. So, if we look at, at the uh, software to hardware dimension, this is a traditional embedded system uh, 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 continuum. What to implement in hardware? What to implement in software? So you have these traditional trade-offs for programmability in software, performance in in hardware, and there are some constraints from 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 the architecture to make it uh, flexible uh, and, and, and and slower or, or faster. And, <clears throat> and what we have also uh, explored is that whenever you write code, be it for software or hardware, uh, uh, the portability is important. So how fast you can move from one implementation or, or run target to, to another. And this was a, a dimension that we also uh, explored in, in some research um, projects because of the interest of having the code faster to run in other targets with the same functionality. Well, and this fluidity uh, is, is, is possible through all the advances that we know about, uh, but that are still going on uh, from the virtualization, lightweight virtualization technologies, uh, user space containers, all the IO uh, frameworks, and then closer to the hardware, the, the acceleration, the offloading opportunities, the GPU or, or or, or TPUs and, and, and the smart NICs. This all put um, uh, new uh, opportunities for running workloads, uh, for having both performance and flexibility uh, in terms of programmability. And uh, one of the highlights in the recently are these domain-specific architectures for networking, well-known the P4 language and the, the protocol independent switch architectures with uh, the Tofino like architectures in, in ASICs. And there are some surveys that, that I point here uh, that cover all, all, all these ad advances. And on the y-axis, the fluidity uh, relies to where to place these functions, uh, traditionally from uh, telecom uh, centers where they, they, they have the, the locations to, to place the, the physical equipment, this physical location gets flexible when you can run them on, on, on a common uh, uh, or let's say a server like architectures so of different form and, and factors from the cloud more centralized big data centers in the core to more point of presence regional data centers to the access to the multi-access edge computing uh, type of uh, facilities you see the edge 
it's it's hard to define it uh, these days and even the edge uh, uh, is uh, uh, also considered at the customer at the customer premises where uh, the customer location has some uh, compute facilities that can be exploited for the different uh, workloads. Okay, so it's a quest for latency. You cannot beat the, the laws of physics, so you need to place the applications and the networking functions as closer to where data is delivered or consumed or, or, uh, 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 and to, to reduce the, the, the latency. If that's what your application needs. So this is another example of uh, different uh, telecom network uh, locations where you can put services, service functionality, and also state related to, to, to the services. And the challenge is, of course, to exploit the, what is best of each location, what is available in terms of research, what, what is the cost, what makes sense for the, the type of, of service. So uh, at the end, we, we have now the chances of decoupling functionality because we have the virtual embodiments, the software, softwareized embodiments of, of the functions, and we can deploy them in, in different candidate uh, locations with trade-offs related to capacity, cost, and, and uh, latency. Closer to the user, better latency, but fewer capacity and, and higher cost. And, the otherwise on towards uh, more centralized data centers. Okay, this this is uh, again the way to to picture the fluidity to, to determine in, in these terms. And when putting together both dimensions, then we have these different uh, optimization uh, opportunities towards latency, towards performance or or cost. And now we can even break it out uh, uh, when we look at networking functions into control plane components and, and data plane components. So, and and the, the, the good about, or, or the less, uh, the evil about um, uh, choices is that you need to make them uh, and be aware of what you are buying. So uh, take your own poison and know what you are uh, going for in terms of what is the performance flexibility of your implementation and, and location choice, uh, <clears throat> including the control and, and data plane uh, split type of, of, of architectures that uh, are uh, available these days. Of course, another challenge is that now you, you need to orchestrate over different domains, uh, technological and eventually even administrative domains. Uh, and uh, we know all know how machine learning, uh, even artificial intelligence, uh, maybe that's a, a, a too um, a hard work for for the real applications these days of machine learning for for networking in operations in design in optimization choices uh, but certainly machine learning uh, is, is, is 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 there as a tool in the toolbox to to help in, in this uh, design and operation uh, activities okay so so far for uh, the concept of fluid networking, and in, in, there are multiple instances uh, that we can see this uh, fluid. I just selected a, a couple of them. Uh, and I'd like to, 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 to get back to the 2010. I know it's, it's a long time ago, but uh, uh, this is uh, my pet project where, where we built this uh, route flow uh, routing solution based on, on OpenFlow, where we uh, were able to exercise uh, an SDN architecture running BGP routing stacks in virtualized uh, containers. Actually, I should say Linux namespaces, and even run them in production for over nine months in, in an internet exchange point without any of the other peers noticing that we were replacing a a traditional vendor box with this uh, routing solution where the control plane was in, 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 in one building and, and the 
and uh, at the rack space of, of the exchange point, we just uh, plugged uh, an open flow, actually two open flow boxes. Um, and this is an example of how to, 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 to split the, the software and the hardware and even uh, at, at the location of, of the functions. Okay, so we build this system to make the glue of, of a control plane and, and the data plane. And uh, in this also ancient slide, uh, uh, you can recognize many of, of the open source components that were part of the solutions. So, uh, from OpenV switch as a, as a way to stitch together the Linux namespaces to create the virtual interfaces uh, that were um, seen, recognized by the routing engines uh, like Quagga, XOR, BERT, uh, and of course, uh, Linux, the, the art table, the, the route table, and where our client uh, uh, was uh, monitoring uh, all the netlink events, putting the netlink events into a, a DB for IPC purposes, and we were using MongoDB and, and Redis at, at, at the time, and coordinate uh, through the intelligence of, of the server how to disseminate the, the relevant uh, state in terms of, of uh, entries, layer two, layer three uh, entries in the different uh, databases. It was a, a lot of fun and a, a great exercise and, and pleasure to see uh, research in going uh, live for, for some time. You can see some ancient also controllers, SDN controllers. Okay, more recent, uh, today we see all these exercise of software to hardware a lot in, in the smart NIC developments or, or GPUs or infrastructure accelerators where um, uh, functions uh, from, from uh, virtual network functions uh, implementations get uploaded to the SmartNIC for performance um, reasons, also for CPU offloading uh, motivations. Uh, so this is a, a, an ongoing trend. Here are another way of, <coughs> of visualize this uh, evolution of the infrastructure stack. I will come back uh, soon to some of the ongoing, very recent ongoing projects that hit this uh, software to hardware trend. <clears throat> and in the telecom domain, uh, we have seen this uploading as well, not just to smart NICs, but also to the, to the switches, to top of rack switches with programmable ASICs. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Here, the, the P4 is the domain specific language technology, and the Tofino ASICs now now by Intel are the, the enabling technologies for, for these offloading functions. <coughs> um, so we have done uh, a lot of research together with Ericsson on this space, how to, to offload uh, functions relevant to the user plane of 4G and, and 5G. These are some of, <coughs> of the recent publications. On Regarding this, I will is one of the selected projects that will bring more more details. And now looking a little bit in the in the other uh, dimension on the x axis, the notion of uh, using the network to bring computation into the network into network locations. <coughs> we have done uh, also uh, proof of concepts, ideas uh, to, to accelerate, for instance, uh, robotic control functions in the data plane, where the data plane uh, through its programmability is able to parse the positions of, of robotic arms, detect uh, uh, zones that are not allowed to move in and accelerate the decision that otherwise a, a, a cloud-based or a software-based controller would take. Uh, uh, inside a TCP connection, uh, generating uh, valid segments with the payloads that uh, that would uh, expect to, for instance, to make the a robot stop. 
or likewise, we, we brought this concept, and we are still working on, on this concept of implementing um, collision avoidance algorithms through map-based um, uh, instantiation of, of the position of the objects, the moving objects, and, and, and a centralized algorithm running inside a programmable pipeline uh, capable of uh, sending uh, command messages to the drones so that uh, they can accelerate the decision making to avoid uh, collisions. You can see some of, of very recent demos and ongoing work in, in publicly available videos. And there is also open source code related to, to merging this uh, Coppelia simulate, Coppelia sim drones and our mini net Wi Fi uh, emulation environment. Okay, so Simon, at this point is where we uh, go deeper into five selected projects. And I don't know, let's see if there is some questions so far on, on the idea and the concept that I, I just brought about network fluidity. Mm, not at the moment. People are very shy so far. Okay, don't be shy. At least uh, this, this is where we get at the heart, right? At the meat of, of, of the talk. And, and please uh, feel free to, to, to question and uh, let's interact as, as, as I best. think we can just dive in. You can maybe, we are uh, 25 minutes past. So is there any, um, oh, there is one question here from Heidi um, about what happens when the endpoint is wireless. So I guess you are asking when the client is it's connected. Okay, well, uh, not just a wired customer. Okay, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, um, in in the wireless domain, and of course we would need to 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 define whether it's a, a mobile type of, uh, uh, of client where uh, like in a five G technology where we we can guarantee some some performance so we can uh, allocate fixed resources so that the clients can be served versus a, a more in the wild wi-fi type of environments where there are no guarantees and, and, and well the there the just the the challenges uh, uh, go higher and higher and um, for many of of those uh, the edge is moving, so this is a, 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 a another challenge the, uh, on the fluidity landscape because the the most convenient access server compute facility uh, will be changing over time as as the as the as, as the mobile. Assuming that uh, wireless is also mobile, if we are talking about fixed wireless access, then the, there are. Uh, better conditions but in, in a mobile wire, uh, wireless <clears throat> client uh, the choice of, of the, of the uh, compute functions uh, that are better and close by will be changing so there are uh, many of, um, of the research uh, trends going to uh, mobile in, into uh, predicting the trajectories and already prefetching contents uh, or uh, preloading um, application instances in, in, in the locations that the, the, the vehicle, uh, because uh, there are many uh, intelligent vehicle systems uh, that look into, into this uh, program space. So it's a, an, another degree of challenges. Yeah, were the the, the robots, they were connected over Wi-Fi or there was like a private <coughs> okay. 5G? In, uh, um, so in, in the, here in the drones, we, we are considering 5G type of connectivity, okay? Uh, that uh, through, the, through the delay guarantees and, and slower delay uh, allows this, this type of, of loading of, of the controller. In the robotic, uh, in the smart factories, mostly these robotic are uh, connected through ethernet. And, and the robotic arms themselves, they, 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 they don't have a, a, 
intelligence embedded or, or very close by other than the, of course the, the physical control physical systems of of the kinematics but but the trajectory the position the so all the planning activities are running in software and this software can run on premises in, in the factory or in the cloud and uh, in, in there is in, in this cloud where there is uncertainty or about the, the performance where we, we we are seeing the opportunities that the the switches the ethernet switches that already serve the connectivity of the robots can be uh, augmented with this uh, type of uh, application specific functions there are some uh, open source projects for using people with wi-fi devices yes indeed it's uh, it's a a, a very inter interesting uh, landscape we have done um, some work in the mininet wi-fi uh, emulation platform where we can instantiate uh, p4 uh, access points uh, so, so that they serve uh, wi-fi and and, uh, and and they have the p4 pipeline uh, programmability Yeah, you can have a mix, uh, wired wireless on the on the premises, and 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 trying to define the multiple edges in, in an experiment. Yeah, this is one of the the type of um, uh, studies that folks uh, or, or do. What are the trade-offs? What is possible? What are the budget limits in terms of latency that can be that can be achieved? What is the the, the yeah, the budget in terms of how far you can go to, to bring the computation. Great. Thanks for, for, for the questions. That makes it much more interesting. Okay, I think we can already dig into the specific ones. Right. So I uh, reference for a different uh, sequence here for the projects, or we can just go one by one. We can go one by one. I have one. my personal preferences, but of course, so <laughs> it's, we can it's go one by one. Actually, I think the the order that I just uh, put into the slides it's, it it swaps the, the initial ones, and the others are are okay, and um, it's just because of of of, of how close they are together okay and also okay. towards the end uh, let me already uh, make a the disclosure that these two last ones are the most uh, um, uh, recent ones and there are fewer uh, uh, solid uh, research and, and, and artifacts or publications whereas in the others we have already repositories publications in journals and so forth <laughs> okay so for this conversation, right, Simon, it was hard. We, we started with over 10 projects that we had to cut uh, to these uh, five ones. Uh, uh, let me talk about this P7. It's just P4 plus the three P's of programmable patch panel. It's a, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a project that uh, seeks to create a, a, an emulated network testbed with 100 gig uh, uh, speed uh, capabilities and it uh, exploits again the uh, Tofino uh, programmable ASIC architectures and the P4 language so that uh, uh, an experimented a researcher uh, that uh, needs to come up with uh, a topology with some certain properties in terms of nodes, links, latency, bandwidth, jitter, like I guess most of you know uh, from uh, not only simulation environments like uh, NS, NS2, NS3, but also emulation platforms like Mininet that, that were so um, useful for SDN research and not just uh, software-defined open flow research, but also for more general uh, networking research and including uh, education. I, I use Mininet just for uh, teaching uh, in the lab IP uh, and, and Ethernet uh, behaviors. Uh, so we took the idea of what if we could instantiate this type of uh, uh, target topology inside 
uh, uh, tofino box, uh, 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 pizza uh, box top of the rack with its uh, uh, 48 or, or uh, ports, 100 gig ports that you can, of course, scale down to 20 feet, 25 gig or, or 10 gig, and have the uh, endpoints uh, being real servers, real applications, li real Linux systems, uh, uh, so it's operating systems, and then the, all the network being emulated inside the Tofino pipeline. Okay. And this is uh, what we started uh, two years ago. It was uh, co-funded by the National Research Experimentation Network of, of, of Brazil, RMP, and also through some students at Unicam and uh, common interests with Ericsson in using this uh, emulation, high performance and high fidelity. Okay, because having the hardware pipeline implementing latency emulation, jitter, packet loss, or even bandwidth at high speeds, uh, being a, a hardware implementation gives you uh, a lot of determinism uh, and therefore a lot of uh, fidelity and realism into, uh, into the topology. So all these link properties that are commonly known, uh, we, could, uh, we were able to implement them through P4 programming um, uh, instructions and compile them compile them into the, into the ASIC. Okay. Uh, the compilation uh, in ASICs with multiple pipes, uh, most uh, recently uh, allowed us also to not only have the topology emulated uh, inside the switch, but also allow a, a user to have inside the nodes some P4 specific code being also deployed. So if, uh, of course, there are some limitations, but if you were to to try out an idea with uh, in a test bed with uh, uh, six, eight, or, or ten uh, P4 nodes, you would need uh, at least so many of, of those physical devices, and uh, uh, that these are not accessible to uh, to to everyone. And not not also at that point, but also they are not very practical to re rewire to to compile. To, to set up the physical test. Okay, so it's the, the type of case that you, you have when you go into emulation or simulation versus a, a physical test. Bed. But we wanted, of course, the uh, performance, the capacity, and the, the fidelity of, 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 of hardware. And well, this is uh, the, uh, what, what we, we, we implemented in P7. So the, the user, the experimenter, defines the topology very similar to a mini net type of. Uh, topology definition. Actually, we, we, we cannot also import a mini-net like topology. And if uh, the user decides to have some specific P4 code for nodes, it would be also an input uh, piece of code. The, the P7 compiles uh, on, 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 on one side, uh, so it, it, it makes the all uh, all the code that is required, or the P4 code that is required to emulate to emulate the topology, that's the upper part of, of this uh, uh, workflow, and uh, then the the lower part is also the the part that is required at runtime after the the comp, uh, compilation using the, the SDA of uh, the SDE, the, the development environment of Barefoot. To populate all the tables that are used uh, to do this uh, emulation of the topology, so uh, the, 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 the tables are used, for instance, when the packets goes through through different links to carry a specific tag uh, for the latency that needs to 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 to, to be um, forced to, and, and also through the paths. So all of these are based on match action tables uh, and and the the, their entries, the table entries, need to be populated. This is what is done after the, the compilation. Okay, so basically these are the, the different steps. If there is P4 code by the user, it needs also to be uh, compiled. Okay, and then uh, after running, the topology is instantiated and, and the experiment can go on. There is a demo. I'm not going to, to run it right now, but I will leave the, the pointer.
to, to, to the demo. Um, in this demo, basically, we have a, a user-defined code at each P4 node where it does some calculation with the TTL, the time to leave field value inside the, the packet, just to show that at every hop there is P4 code uh, uh, running. Okay, here is the link. Uh, we'll make the slides accessible and and we can also uh, put them in some blog news or, or something to, to facilitate. There is, this is work in progress. Uh, we have some users, we have some um, uh, ongoing uh, plans to put this uh, on in, in the bumping the wire emulation into other testbed facilities to to allow for uh, reproducible experiments uh, uh, in, in real networks. There are some new features that we want to do. Like for instance, if you have a, uh, you want to have the emulate congestion over time, then you can put congestion patterns, packet loss patterns. Uh, right now, the, the the link characteristics are static, but uh, we are working right now really on this making this link characteristics dynamic it's just basically changing dynamically the the entries of the match action tables through a control controller based uh, program this is already in, in github the, if you want the latest branch uh, with the user defined pipelines maybe you need to dig a little bit or or, or getting in content uh, get, get in contact Okay, there was a demo last year, and there will be uh, uh, another demo uh, this year in, in in events. Okay, so that was it for for the P7 uh, emulation. Let me see if there is anyone interested in in getting some some more insights or, or clarifying questions. Mm -hmm. Slides will be shared. We don't have any questions here yet, but I'm just curious when you were doing the, when you're talking about the, the emulation, you talked about speed and delay. What, what can you get with the, with P7 at the moment? In terms okay. Of okay. That's a, that's a, a good question. So with, with, with P7, you can have, and uh, course the 100 gig access uh, link interfaces. Uh, and then um, uh, the size of the experiment will depend uh, on on the total capacity of the traffic flows that you will be uh, throwing at, at it and the complexity of the topology. Because uh, the trick here, for instance, to, to make an emulation like uh, latency, it's not uh, anything more complicated than recirculating the packet as many times as needed through the internal uh, pipelines or, or, or reserve ports, recirculation ports of the ASIC that are uh, reserved for that purpose. So um, if you have a 100 millisecond, you want to emulate 100 millisecond latency, you need to have the packet 100 millisecond recirculated inside the, the ASIC. So you can imagine that there are trade-offs. The more uh, flows you put, the more latency you, you you put and the higher the, the throughput of the flows mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 there will be there is a limit so we we have run experiments uh, at 10 gig speeds with uh, arguably well-sized topologies um, uh, of course if you want to push the limits towards the 100 gig there, there we cannot beat the, the the physics again and we cannot have 100 gigs flows recirculated uh, over a long time. No, no. I was just curious what you guys have done so far in terms of, of scale. Mm -hmm. So That's we mostly okay. play with 10 gig interfaces because we don't have servers with 100 gig interfaces. We have with 25, so we can use these four times by 25 split cables. Um, but so far, uh, for, for our needs, uh, speed has not been so much, so the, the, the actual um, uh, capacity is not uh, so much the main benefit, but mostly the determinism, the reproducibility capabilities, and of yeah. course the realism of, of running real stacks at the end hosts, real implementations. Yeah. Real. This is not simulation, you're doing the emulation, right? Mm -hmm. 
Um, so Heidi has a question. Um, okay, yeah, how does it compare to, to other cloud test beds like Cloud Lab in the US or there are, there's another test bed in Brazil? Uh, um, well, uh, I think this compares closer to what you can run usually in, in a single lab uh, instance uh, in terms of, uh, um, of, a, of a traditional emulation like, like Mininet, but at, at higher uh, capacities or, or even with a little bit higher accuracy. Um, certainly, you could uh, emulate a, a, a cloud test bed uh, uh, like uh, in, in a distributed cloud infrastructure, you could uh, instantiate the same topology and bring uh, uh, similar uh, link latency characteristics, congestion characteristics. So I would be very confident that we could replicate a certain size, certain size cloud-based testbed experiment. Of course, what you would need is uh, to allocate all the servers in the rack that are going to act as, as clients and, and servers and attach them or use VMs inside a server and, and add it to the, to the experiment. Uh, and the testbed in Brazil, it's focused on disaggregation. It's called the Open RAN Brazil testbed. It focuses on an, an Open RAN and, uh, and ONF SD RAN type of uh, experimentation over optical, radio access, and, and cloud domains. And there, the, the, the match is very easy. So you have a, uh, you have a fixed testbed, and, and you want to run some, uh, for instance, some real time uh, run, in, uh, intelligent run controller. For that, you need something exciting in terms of something goes on, the users go in, there's some congestions, some, right? Uh, and either you force it and bring the users or, or, or the data sources and, and, and do it like that, or with this emulation capability, you can even bump it in the wire in, between two disaggregated devices and emulate an access network at, at that point, and then replace some of the scenarios that uh, are interesting, for instance, in terms of congestion or, or, or whatever. Also, uh, NSF Fabric is, 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 is a very interesting testbed where uh, the opportunity to have the experimenter to bring reproducible networking conditions could be interesting. Hmm. Okay, great. Uh, let's go. Still have four more to go. I'm, I'm still the research center. Let's go into this. Uh, this one, hybrid P4 5G. This is about implementing user plane functions in programmable software, hardware, stacks. Uh, and we started uh, some years ago with uh, a collaboration again with Ericsson, has been our main sponsor in, in the lab and still is. Uh, and looking at the portability dimension that I mentioned, you, we have programmability, we have DPDK, we have uh, 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 high performance programmability, but it's hard to, to, to make your code, your functions, your pipeline to compile into another target. So we started by using P4 and open data plane uh, SDKs and, and creating a, a, a compiler system that would create this uh, multi-target uh, uh, compilation. Then we looked in specifically into which of the user plane functions could be implemented uh, using the, the P4 language, the, 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 the language uh, uh, artifacts, the, the, the objects, the capabilities. There are some limitations in, in P4. Um, and so we implemented the logic of uh, Evolve Packet Gateway or, and more recently of uh, 5G UPF and compile it to, to different targets, including the, the Tofino uh, hardware. And uh, more recent, uh, what we have been doing the, in the last two years is uh, looking also into splitting the P4 code pipeline uh, so that it could run part in one uh, P4 device, another in another one. That's one dimension of the hybrid 
capabilities that we are looking and then looking into this software to hardware continuum we could think of uh, that part of the p4 code that it requires more programmability more state uh, or, or some p4 functions extern functions that are not uh, uh, supported by a, a, a tofino asic uh, a tna model that would be running in the x86 or arm or general purpose domain others could be running in the smart NICs. this would be this uh, intermediate uh, p4 and the others in the top of rack uh, switch and this could be running on the edge in some uh, edge uh, facilities or more at, at the core i mean if you look at the 5g mobile um, functions uh, uh, and, and also the concept of slicing you could decide to make some for some slices the UPS closer to the edge and for others more uh, would be more convenient uh, to have them at, at the core and always located to the breakout applications that you are interested in so this is what we uh, have been um, playing uh, exercising so we have developed a hybrid x86 and tofino uh, pipelines for this i don't know what happened with this slide sorry for that i will fix it um, uh, <clears throat> this is just the title of of the, of the, of the project uh, here you can see in the in the bottom left uh, a tofino hardware pipeline so we're going through the layer two and then the, the gtp tunneling and uh, and what uh, we also had to solve in this type of hybrid designs is to decide what of the P4 code to have in the software x86 pipeline, what to keep in, in the hardware. Not just from the functional perspective, because there could be some externs that you cannot compile into the Tofino, but also from the scalability perspective. If you want to just keep the mappings of the user equipments that consume state, uh, and then uh, and, uh, and there are some uh, memory limitations in your hardware. For those users that are less active, you can decide them to keep them in, in the software. Uh, for those flows, even that uh, they are not so much performance uh, critical, you can uh, process them in, in the x86 without compromising the end-to-end -end performance. And those that are heavy hitters, for instance, you can fully offload them to the to the hardware and for that we we had to also investigate uh, how to de detect these heavy hitters how to take these decisions and we come up with, with some interesting algorithms that run entirely in the uh, data plane uh, based on uh, interpacket gap uh, analytics running in, in again in, in the p4 uh, logic in, inside the tofino asic and this has been one of the exercises. In collaboration with Ericsson and, and Elte uh, in Hungary, folks, they have also explored uh, how to, uh, to use SmartNix instead of the Tofino hardware architectures, and also looking into GNODE-B, radio access network functions. There are some functions, for instance, like buffering. How do you do buffering while the user equipment is not available? So Heidi was asking, what happens to wireless? Well, wireless always brings challenges. If the user equipment needs to be signaled, uh, maybe because it's not active, that there is some packets to be delivered, the traffic for that user needs to be buffered. And buffering inside that Tofino uh, ASIC, like we were recirculating in the P7 project, is expensive and has some limits. So for that, you could offload in the buffering as a service uh, into a companion x86 so the solution would look like that you have a tofino box you have a server stitched together with some dedicated interfaces and then you can use this pipe type of, of the of the pipeline for for that one and um, uh, so combining uh, this into some scenarios where you have some delay critical uh, uh, traffic uh, you could also play out with the QoS external functions in, in the hardware so you can say oh you are a heavy hitter you will go into a low priority queue you are a low latency user so you go into high priority queue this type of um, uh, actions and, and then you can get of course the the performance gains 
uh, that was uh, some of the experiments that that we have been doing there is some code on on the um, uh, pipeline there's some code i didn't put here on the heavy heater there is some code that is not public uh, could be make it public uh, and there are very two good publications recent uh, transaction publications where you can find many of the details demos i need to put out a, a, a video there is a, a video so i need to to find out the, the link that that slide i owe you the the latest update with, with that link to, to the demo Okay, I know you guys at Red Hat are looking a lot in, in this telecom domain space and um, probably in the P4 and Smartwick. Maybe there is some question about that or there's some interest in some specific conversation on this uh, domain space. Do you see anyone or Simon or do you have any curiosity or? Uh, there is one question from Flavio about um, yeah that Intel okay. was yeah mm -hmm. yeah this was uh, uh, yeah, honestly uh, uh, I'm not uh, 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 not happy news for anyone working on on, on the to on the program of Tofino uh, pipelines they they stopped the version three right of of, of the development they will still support in the Tofino 2 and um, well I'm just a speculator I don't I don't know uh, but uh, my my guess uh, and it's also a guess shared with some of, of, of colleagues that work in the space is that this was a business decision of Intel that has cut down many of the business units R&D uh, business units that uh, didn't have a uh, um, how to say a uh, 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 not a solid but a, a consolidated business plan right with uh, the the business unit making the profits as the tech crisis has has hit i don't think it was a it's a it's a failure of the concept or the technologies behind programmable pipelines programmable logistics i think they 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 will still uh, flourish uh, not, not not know if by intel or by another uh, uh, a programmable silicon chip maker that again uh, opens up the programmability opportunity to to the cloud scalers to the telecom providers that uh, would uh, like to benefit from the programmability uh, <clears throat> and, uh, so the, the um, having the opportunity of being programmable at the same cost price factor is, is certainly appealing right for 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 the innovation perspectives, for the reuse of, of hardware, or the timing of, of purchasing, deploying, and so forth. But uh, indeed, it was an uh, unfortunate uh, decision for all of us working on, on the programmable Tofinos on the hardware. Of course, there's still programmability in the SmartNix, in the x86, in the Linux TC uh, uh, space, but um, for the next level of the Tofinos with more pipes, with more memory, uh, it was uh, unfortunate. So that... uh, there is some um, there is something going on on, on equivalent uh, uh, ASIC. There are not so many ASIC producers right out there, but there there are uh, programmable pipelines uh, that uh, that are still alive and are still in in, in, in the are already in the market and others are in in, in let's say in the last stages of r d these days the p4 workshop is running over there in california i have some some colleagues attending so maybe there, there will be some news on, on that one let's see This is a case for reconfigurable hardware where we are not as dependent on vendors for the hardware system style. Yeah, that's the that's the main drive, right? Of of, of uh, white box type of thinking, making them down to the ASIC, and, and there are other um, um, companion um, 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 developments like you see in the operating system for. Uh, 
networking devices like uh, the Sonic Network OS, uh, where it has this uh, say aside the switch abstraction interface with P4 or not with P4. Uh, you can also think that the P4 uh, interface, the programmable interface, it's also interesting if you have a fixed function ASIC just for the sake of, of having your programmable logic and your control plane bit embedded in, in the switch or remote through a gRPC, SDN controller-like architecture, having the, the, the logic of, or, and of your control application independent from the hardware for the sake of portability, like I was saying in the fluidity that you want to have your code portable through a different target. So if you decide to switch your, your um, ASIC uh, provider, the cost of switching is affordable. Otherwise you are locked in uh, and, and you cannot switch. So this is uh, certainly the, the vendor independence uh, uh, at Drive that was behind, the, that is still behind P4 and also uh, in developments like the side, the switch abstraction interface and the white box uh, OS systems. All right, we are on the top of the hour now, but um, is there any preference for any topic that we should switch the order because people need to leave or can you just continue here? I think we can try out to continue. I would at least yeah. reserve the last 10 minutes. Uh, I know energy goes yeah. down, uh, but at yeah. least Please, Simon, don't let me uh, spend the last 10 minutes without talking about smartness and also having some discussion on what could be opportunities of Red Hat and our groups and research to, to and how to do it, to do it right? And where? where? Let, let me... Yeah, let me be we're representing the topics as giving people also... Uh, Content to yeah. think about it. Okay, let me let me be try, try to be a little bit faster on the next uh, ones. The next ones are are related actually. Uh, so uh, recent research also uh, with Ericsson uh, uh, were devoted to closed loop architectures, closed control loop architectures for dash type of video services, but also for other video services where uh, we don't have access to the client applications, to the uh, YouTube video player or, or Netflix or Amazon Prime or whatever dash that, but the operator would like to, to infer how the, the service is doing and eventually also to, to take some action if the estimated quality of experience is uh, below expected. So we started building up uh, this type of architectures where collecting telemetry, inferring a building a quality of experience model, inferring the expected uh, KPI of the quality of experience, and then actuating by reconfiguring, uh, uh, making another rule of, of queuing or, or taking another route. There are multiple actuation actions that, that can be thought of. So we, we started a couple of years with this prototype and we prototype all of, of these, these are of course, Python components, open source components, Kafka here, Grafana, and all this. And at the bottom in the infrastructure, we, we build these uh, emulated systems, like based on Mininet Wi-Fi, or we have containers as well stitched together. So we emulate the networking conditions. That's why also we, we built the P7, because we wanted to also to replace at some point Mininet with a hardware-based setup. And of course, OpenV Switch is our best friend <laughs> in, in uh, most of our proof of concept prototypes. Since I was referring route from 2010, we use OpenV Switch uh, for, for all the, uh, the programmable switching and, uh, and, and to instantiate topologies and, and so forth. So we build this uh, system. We uh, create uh, uh, machine learning models. Uh, we built also Jupyter notebooks to to see how these uh, video uh, were playing. We, we we introduced some Linux TC issues and and took some some actions. Okay, so we evolved over this idea to make these traces of the traffic more realistic. So we introduced. Uh, the emulation of real cellular network traces of 4G and 5G, 
and replay them into the Linux TC uh, interfaces of the OpenVSwitch instances. Uh, and then we observe uh, what happened with the, the TCP, with the quick traffic, multiple transfer protocols. I know, Simone, you, you like this stuff. So we, we looked a lot of how quick behaves, how HTTP 2, 3 behaves, and dash video quality of experience suffers when for the different networking conditions. So we, with this framework that we developed, this effector framework that works also uh, for encrypted traffic, this, this was also a, a, a nice feature because we cannot look into the HTTP segment if we are a network operator, we the sent to an encryption. So we had to bring some flow level features that would uh, uh, be useful for QE prediction. So we have all this, this, this is all out uh, in Jupyter notebooks, as you can see. We have the traces, we do these comparisons of 4G versus 5G for quick, for TCP, and for, for multiple scenarios. And right now, what we are doing is we are running uh, also our own data set collections over the uh, operational 5G networks in, here in Campinas, where we have some 5G flavors, also in the state of Sao Paulo, and the city of Sao Paulo, sorry, where we have standalone 5G deployments. We also run in, 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 in Nice, in France, and, and we are you, uh, for twofold. Uh, there's a twofold reason. We want these new traces for our own experiments to run them in our, in our emulated environment. And secondly, also, which was the topic of a PhD student he recently defended his thesis was to validate that what he was proposing in the emulated environment as features, for instance, to infer that YouTube was going to stall and that there was some quality of experience degradation, everything that was doing in the emulated environment in terms of algorithms would still hold in, in a real environment with real YouTube in a real 4G and real 5G network. Okay, so that was uh, the other project. There is a framework, there is data set collection, there are there will be a hackathon as well in SBRC in next month with these data sets. So a lot of interesting stuff. So Bing, if there is no quick question, let me take it over. No, not here. Okay, um, I just want an, an uh, just to share an update, uh, not an update, but as info, the 5G standalone uh, just means that you have 5G end to end in the radio and packet core uh, as compared to non standalone, where at some point you have a transition back to 4G and then to 5G. Um, that's not very ahead in deployments in Europe, as far as I know, but more in the US. So, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. And I, I actually worked a little bit on this topic here as well. And do, do you see this as still as a um, this observability, the network observability, the flows of observ observability, um, a topic of interest in or that is there anything still being discussed there because this is here very specific to video traffic to dash you don't have access to the server not how the client is receiving traffic or the the, the adaptive bit rate is being done um mm -hmm. but more generally um having more network observability um is something that we we largely miss Mm -hmm. especially yeah. if you go up in the rates yeah and then we we can think at multiple time scales right so if you look at the closed loop uh, uh, architectures or or run type of near real time there are opportunities for doing something at very uh, small time scale but i could also imagine operators at uh, longer time scales to taking decisions for planning for right for uh, and, uh, and augmenting their capacity for taking this network planning type of uh, of um, of decisions. Um, we have also some work. Uh, we are doing also some work in optical networking, where uh, this comes also very handy. This uh, machine learning observability uh, of of the network uh, to do soft failure identification. 
So the, the, there is the before the a, a failure happens, you are you already f uh, based on what you learned in the past, you can already uh, foresee and take some remedy actions be be before something happens. So certainly observability, certainly data, getting as most data from that you can at scale uh, uh, will be a, a, a potential differentiator factor for for operators or for service providers to take smart decisions right at multiple scales time scales and uh, with multiple um, uh, objectives as i would say or different objectives. so one of the evolution of the dash video traffic that we we are right now in, in putting efforts is not just dash not just youtube uh, but also virtual reality type of uh, flows these are different. These have different workflows. These 360 VR and also the XR, the glasses. We are looking into how how these applications create these flows. What, what is the quality of experience of an XR? We know it's delay sensitive, but uh, it's still uh, there is still a lot to be understood about this type of workloads. It's adaptive. There are tiles there. So in this uh, work that. Uh, as will be published in June in NetSoft and also demoed, it's it's called QIs. Uh, we are exploring, we are putting together a, a couple of, of, of technologies. We are putting in-band telemetry to collect the telemetry uh, hope by hope of this type of, of workloads, 360 VR videos. We are also exploiting this inter-packet gap analytics and use them to infer the, the quality of experience, OK? Uh, as I said, uh, it, it's tricky, this, uh, this uh, type of VR, uh, including um, scenarios where the user would move very fast from one uh, viewport to the other. And if you are able to predict that, uh, and you can prefetch and, 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 and improve the performance, because there are some issues if, if you or for this type of VR streaming, when there are these uh, type of um, movements by, by 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 the viewports, changes of the viewport. So we again uh, we put the traffic generators. We have the players. We play out the conditions. Here's where we use P7, for instance. This switching the in the middle, put instantiate a, a network topology with some networking conditions. Even could run P4 specific code like the IPG calculation or, or the in-band telemetry collection. And then we, we run the, the, the experiments. And then we look for quality of experience, KPIs, mean opinion scores. We use this well-known standardized uh, objective QE KPIs as much as possible. And when we, we, we try to correlate how this inter packet gap metrics uh, point to QE uh, issues. On, a, on an evolution of the effector dash framework, we are running now this also this 360 VR workload. So what I just presented before is also using here, but of course for a model of, of QE uh, that fits better the 360 type of virtual reality uh, 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 workloads and have the training phase, inference phase, all these uh, ML type of exercises. So we select the features. We also, again, play out with HTTPS versus Quick and, and, and see what is better in also for 4G, 5G type of, 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 of workloads. As you see, we, we being a system, being a group, uh, we, we, we can uh, benefit from, from, from the group's knowledge and, and put together uh, the, the research pieces. Okay, should, should we go? We are only 15 minutes less and I, I, I want to say some words about the most recent ongoing work on pot acceleration and then move to the smartness and final thoughts. Okay, Simon. Just go ahead. We don't have any questions, but this one here may trigger <laughs> from. Great. I'm, I'm worried about about the time. Uh, so this is joint work with Professor Fabio Verdi from Federal 
University of Sao Carlos. He's a partner also of the this new uh, research center of Apes Van Ericsson. And he he's mostly looking in how to offload in mesh crypto functions like KTLS into SmartNix. I am my student, one of my students is looking into some of the networking functions of uh, Kubernetes, like the load balancing and, and net and others that, that could be accelerated with uh, the running the smart nick and uh, the motivation uh, is, is well known is uh, applications that depend on this microservice with the crypto functions so if you can accelerate or offload the cpu then there are some infrastructure gains this is what he's uh, right now uh, doing uh, with uh, his, his students with this uh, specific uh, smart nick uh, looking into this uh, 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 crypto functions uh, capabilities of the smart nicks and seeing how faster or how much the cpu can be relieved uh, ktls has different modes of, of operations this is uh, one of the kernel that one that that can be uh, offloaded to the smart nick here you can see uh, the setup with the red hat uh, version that is being uh, used and some very preliminary numbers uh, when i said before the start of the uh, talk that i was fetching the latest results with fabio these were some of the slides thanks to fabio that he was uh, uh, copy and pasting so please don't take them don't copy paste them because they are really uh, fresh i need to uh, to be more extensively Produce, but we can see some of the CPU usage benefits uh, if, if you do the NIC KTLS processing in line, as, as you would expect. Oh, everyone would expect that, but we I, I don't know if it's so well known how much it is. It's 10 times, it's 100 times, and it's two times, it's five times. So that's what, what we are looking. We are also looking to virtualization. So if, if we have uh, something like Portman, with the containers, uh, how does this uh, Sherni KTLS type of acceleration work? We don't know. If anyone knows, if anyone has questions, if anyone has, please, this is a really fresh uh, area that we are very interested uh, uh, in, in, into the digging. Um, and that that would be the, the, the last uh, slide for, for the Arturo. Hey, thanks for the heads up. That was the last one. So maybe there is some question here on this or some idea on, on, on this uh, smart thing. I'm sure that uh, you folks are looking to this um, uh, IPUs uh, and the smart nicks and, and are certainly running workloads over there, right? Mm, yeah, my second question is uh, okay. Alanox. Well, Marcelo has just caught me. Uh, uh, if there is a Melanox card, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I will ask Pablo. I know there is this one that the Pablo, this Texas one that, uh, but the, I don't know. But we can certainly dig into that one. Kernel dependence, okay. <laughs> Great haters. <laughs> um we've um so with containers we have talked about also before other um um about service mesh as well and there was something about offloading and you had a use case there i think also coming from ericsson there is something that materialized there or it was related to this project that you are doing now of there is nothing materialized. There is, we are still, uh, what we are looking is if you are running the 5G control plane in containers, what what are the, the workloads there that uh, that could be uh, accelerated uh, in, in this? You have all this microservice-like uh, or service-based architecture of 5G control, and, 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 and there are different um, ways of, of, of instantiating them in terms of where to load what container what what mapping microservice to container and also 
what we were investigating, studying is the sidecar proxies uh, yes. or, or doing it less uh, with without proxies or but uh, there is nothing uh, materialized and uh, if I if there was something that I could not speak of I I, I would not do it uh, uh, but uh, honestly we are uh, we are looking into this so we are we are very interested in to this so very interesting landscape yeah, okay you can so we have 10 minutes left uh, yeah. and then we can maybe conclude with smartness and yeah. Okay, so I already pointed to this. This is something that we just started. April 1st is the first official day of this 10 year long initiative. It's a very interesting funding program by our, our main funding agency. It's called FAPESP of the Sao Paulo State, which funds scholarships, research uh, projects of different sizes. And there's this one that uh, targets a partnership with uh, private industry uh, for very specific scope centers. So there's energy, there's oil, there, is, there are many things. And there was none on telecommunications or networking. And that was the opportunity that uh, Ericsson and our group started three years ago, started discussing four or five years ago, but effectively putting the proposal together three years ago. And finally, we. We, we are taking off um, to, to create this competence center. So how to engineer cloud computing and network infrastructures, looking into the 2030 horizon of, of applications, of, of challenges. So the founders are Unicam, the USP and UFSCar, I mentioned already Fabio, he was there from, from the beginning, and many other associate researchers in, in Brazil, and of course our international collaborations they are all welcome. It's a research center, not from Ericsson, just for it. It's from FAPES, for it's for, for it's a, it's co-funded by by Ericsson, but it's it's an open one, and, and we welcome uh, many collaborations. So uh, we look not just writing papers, uh, but also influencing standards, building open source, open software, open research, open data sets. So all the these open data set collections that uh, I was mentioning are already uh, um, pre-work that we were doing in, in, uh, with the spirit of, of this center, training, building the competences of our students from undergrad to grad to meet the, the needs of, uh, of the evolving industry. Um, uh, of course, there are opportunities of entrepreneurship like startups or other exploitation plans or demands for public publicists that the center should be able to, to make impact. When we talk about uh, radio and wireless, that was one of uh, Heidi's questions. Here at, at the Smartness Center, we, we step out. Ericsson does uh, a lot of the greatest work and, and we start from the base station inside the network towards the compute infrastructure towards the mech okay so we don't uh, have in scope or the, the the radio research the physical layer research there may be something there may be some collaboration there will be certain collaboration but it's not in the in the main roadmap we look into the use cases of all, all these types we look into the networking functions ai ml implementation be it cloud-based service-based open source network service mesh as you can see there zero touch okay these are some of the ericsson vision uh, uh, areas and this these are all in, in in our scope this is the the house like a uh, structure that uh, uh, that we came up to organize the center so we look at into future applications from the augmented society and the industrial internet to drive uh, advancements, uh, scientific and technological, from the core networking aspects. And here you see fluid control and data plane. That was, again, the, 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 the catch to, to, to the concept that uh, I was referring to with all the, the different areas that we are looking into, slicing intent, programmability, all these uh, research areas. Then we have, of course, Edge, cloud, customization, acceleration, telco cloud, edge native, all these aspects as another pillar. 
And the third pillar at the heart, if you want, or at the, this is this cognition, so ML for networking, distributing ML, so ML workloads uh, are certainly a, a, another area that uh, we have dedicated research uh, uh, vision. And then two uh, orthogonal uh, areas, trustworthiness, we cannot avoid looking to security, privacy, safety, ethics, and sustainability, a very big hot topic, how to run these infrastructures with less energy, with more uh, economical incentives and all the sustainability uh, of, of the goals uh, that, that are well known in other policies worldwide from the uh, worldwide uh, organization. So uh, here you can see, I'm not going to, to repeat this, uh, because I, I already dev devoted the topic on fluidity. So we pick up a, 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 a driving use case and then we identify how to realize it through specific advancements. We run this uh, research strands with some PI and the team, in the use cases, making contributions over the different STAs over years and merging together efforts having milestones of the different research strands, collaborating, merging into next ones, we need to look over how to work over a 10 year um, uh, lifespan. Uh, we have a lot of infrastructure budgeted uh, from programmable devices, from uh, smart meters, drones, robots, uh, edge computing, uh, cameras, uh, XR, even a, a 5G SA uh, network, a private one, will be built uh, for experimentation. And finally, with uh, less than five minutes, this is the last slide, because the other one is more Q&A. So, opportunities for collaboration. I hope that by now someone has uh, found some joy and interest in what we are doing. But in any case, uh, we, my research group, Smartness, or the researchers in Smartness, our, our community, will keep leveraging open source. We'll keep using open source as, as artifacts for, for our research to prove our agendas, our ideas. What we have discussed, Simon, right? Uh, what could be potential collaboration? So mm -hmm. if we have the technical people that work in, in the key pieces of projects, then we can steer our decisions of what to choose, what to choose, which branch, which right, which um, uh, version, which combination of, of yeah. And this is a, a challenge actually for our academic works to to make able to make More some concrete things. use cases, right? To have yeah, use cases that are maybe coming from industry and maybe not only for the telco industry, although we have a lot to do with that at the moment as well. Um, yeah, so there are too many moving pieces. Uh, it's hard for some for students to build up the right stack, the dependencies, and and maybe some project is dying out, or you are already seeing the momentum. Right. And, want, and we want to take decisions that are more future that we don't go into a, a loose right. edge or, or less lower the impact potential. So. These are the type of decisions that having collaboration, even through communication, just uh, open communication could be uh, effectively done. Technical advice, of course. Hey, Simone, do you have someone that works with OBN and, and can help us with this uh, back or, or maybe make some insight or spend 10 minutes with us on a call uh, for a minimum valuable project testbed, uh, what would be the advice so we have faster time to build these uh, setups. These are certainly uh, ways that uh, we could collaborate. Uh, we would also welcome uh, research questions that you have. How would this scale? How would you distribute this? How would you replace yeah. that? Architectural, software, performance. We like to run performance. We know how to do it to some extent. So that this is this is to some extent also the challenge for us because um, um, we we are like a 
platform <laughs> technology platform provider and we usually don't own workloads that run on our system so if we how do you how do you dimension and how you design system if you're working for a telco industry but then tomorrow you're supposed to work for for example now we have automotive also that it's spinning up mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. So a lot of what I do is related to with Telco and a lot of what I do is related to OpenShift. So there are many, many questions and many related challenges there. And Telco is doing that, different flavors and sizes of, of OpenShift um, and trying to understand um, what we need to provide when it comes to Telco. It, it can be a larger provider, a larger operator, but it can be a private 5G network as well. It can be the robots use case that you had or like a factory use case that runs a private 5G that has absolutely nothing to do with a larger operator running um, thousands of users watching video while they are mobile. Um, so we, we have I think we have a lot, a lot in that direction that we we try to understand, looking at the customers that we have, mm -hmm. um, but also to investigate beyond the more concrete requests that we get from that. Right. <clears throat> so we we are all up to try to share these uh, use cases and and also to if you have been able to frame some research questions we don't know that we don't know that we would like to know that to listen maybe we can steer them into uh, into our uh, uh, agenda into smaller projects yeah like yeah. proof of concepts and smaller short term very yeah. concrete time boxed projects that it's worth sharing with um people yeah. here and the, the last ballot there is uh, maybe we can think about uh, internships, research internships. I think that the Google Summer of Code that we uh, we have some experiences of our students making them and also hosting in Routflow. We hosted uh, a couple of editions, but maybe more research centric. So spending three months with some of you joining your teams, your, even if their end result is, is is not what we expected. I think the experience of a student at the master's or PhD level to engage in some community uh, development uh, like you do in, in Red Hat, that would be uh, for the curricula, for the building talent, for the building uh, the future engineers. For me, that would be again, even if he, the three months don't advance anything for his PhD, but for him as a professional, that would be a gain for me. So. That's the last one. And finally, we are hiring. Finally, we have the funds. So, and the position, the, the deadline is still open. 10 more days. If, if you want to enroll for the second semester and join us, uh, please uh, reach us, follow the, the, the guidelines. And well, thank you again. And hi, thanks for the opportunity. And let's hope that some of the opportunities concretize and materialize. Yes, thank you very much, Christian and Simone. Um, I appreciate all the information you shared, and um, it was a lot. Uh, uh, people are uh, encouraged to contact you directly, and we'll follow up afterwards to see um, other ways we might collaborate on research or on internships or some of the ideas you've brought up. So um, please don't hesitate to reach out to me as well if you're interested, anybody who was attending. Um, and we'll follow up with the slides and the recording as, as Jen is pointing out here. So thanks again. Um, we'll Thank see you very you much. Thank you. Red Thank Hat you. Research Day in about a month. Bye-bye.